Hello everyone, hello, welcome back to the channel. Third time to charm. Um, <laughs> earlier on in my car, it was 37 degrees. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, but now, it's 29 in here. So it's, it's still low 90s, it's really hot. I need the fan on, it's addressed, let's move on. Today, we're talking about the final cut. Now, if you've been on this channel a while, you'll know that Pink Floyd's The Final Cut used to be my favorite album. It's now been replaced by Wish You Were Here, which I even, I love that album so much, it's tattooed on my skin. Well, the song. I mean, this was for the song and the album, and my then girlfriend. But it's not, it, besides the point, huh, this album's spectacular, and it is the last album by Roger Waters in the band. And it wasn't even going to be released. So the story goes, while filming for the, filming for the wall, recording for the wall, a lot of songs just couldn't make the cut because the record label said the album was way too long. It's already a double album at one hour and 30 minutes. So some of the songs, songs like uh, Your Possible Pasts, When the Tigers Break Free, The Heroes Return, Paranoid Eyes, The Final Cut, were all, I believe those were all the songs that were also going to be on the wall. But, no, they didn't make the cut. Hence how this got its name. But David Gilmore just didn't believe it was good enough. You know, uh, it just didn't think that this was any good. And they weren't going to release it. But Roger Waters kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I'm not sure how the story goes. But I believe it's right after this album came out that Roger Waters quit the band. And Pink Floyd just broke up for a few years until like 1985. This was 1980, 1983, original UK release date. That's why I like Pink Floyd's albums, because it <laughs> says it down there. And it even says, for Eric Fletcher Walters, 1913 to 1944. I believe that's uh, Roger Waters' dad. I'm not 100% on that, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But I've been rambling on. Let's talk about the looks. Before I show you the album, I have in my collection Pink Floyd's 1983 single, Not Now John. Now, this has the single version and Heroes Return parts one and two. Now, Heroes Return, it's a really soft and melodic song. But the part two that gets added on the single version is really heavy and it really builds up. Uh, Roger Waters' vocals, he starts almost screaming. He's so angry. It's brilliant and I wish I could play it for you. Now, not now John the single version. I have to throw that over there. Well, it's setting off my allergies. Uh, the reason why the single version is different, because in 1983, you couldn't say fuck all that. So they changed it to stop all that. Now we'll talk about it in the song section, but the story behind Not Now John is that in the US you might say regular Joe, but in the UK, uh, someone who's a John, or just John in the broad sense, as well as a name, is also the name for like the, the populace at large. So a regular person would be called a John. That's just how it is in the UK, I think, from what I read. So the song is... Uh, the government's pr pretty much saying, I don't care about your problems, fuck all that, I've got all this other stuff to do. You know, I've got to get on with the film show. I've got, I know you're starving in the streets, but we need to keep building ships to keep up with Japan and go help in Vietnam. We don't care about your problems, you know. Feeding the war machine is more important than the problems of a regular John. That's the whole idea of the song. And we'll talk about it more in the song section. Um, now this album, is, I love, so I believe this is a British our officer's uniform. Those are like the badges, and then that's one big badge up in the top corner. Now I'm not 100% on that, don't quote me. And I love on the back here, you've got, uh, you've got the British soldier with the knife in his back. And the whole album, again, we'll talk about this more later, but the whole album is about how Returning soldiers weren't treated very well at all and I mean it's kind of true and it's been true forever They're not paid. They're not that's not getting into that. Uh, I love this gatefold That obviously has so that must be like the with not now John in the middle That must be the three singles from the album and then it's just really nicely laid out 
I'll show you the label because it's got this nice custom label on it, which is really pretty. I like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much all to see. So let's talk about the songs. You may notice the change in t-shirts. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> this one's much bigger. It's, well, it's too big for me, but it's perfect on a day like today. Uh, it's too fucking hot. Oh, anyway, this album starts with the song The Post-War Dream. Now, the song references the character Maggie. Um, now, Maggie is in reference to the Prime Minister at the time in the UK called Margaret Thatcher. Now, when I say that people do not like Margaret Thatcher, I mean they do not fucking like Margaret Thatcher. I could do another five-hour video on why people do not like the Iron Lady. Why she is hated. HATED! Like... Uh, because she was Prime Minister, she got a state funeral, and they drove her through London, and people were singing Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead, and there are TikTok accounts, I've seen them, there's a TikTok account that posts every day, uh, and they, they post like it's been 500 or so days since Margaret Thatcher died, um, <laughs> it hit, people hate that woman, and she is the most divi divisive person in British politics, therefore... Before someone throws a rock from my window, I'm not going to talk about Mag Margaret Thatcher. I'm going to talk about Maggie, the character who may, who, you know what I mean. It's just, it's not, I'm not arguing with anyone. I'm only going to talk about what this album is about, okay? All right. She's, people really do not like that woman. Um, but anyway, the post-war dream, it's really soft and light, but I love, uh, Roger Waters' lyrics, it sounds like Roger speaking to Maggie, saying, well, hang on a minute, after World War II, we were promised there wouldn't be any more big future wars. Now we've had the Korean War, there's Vietnam, there's the Falklands War, and, you know, Maggie, what happened to the post-war dream? Uh, the UK is not booming like the rest of Europe. What the hell's going on? And it's such a beautiful song which bleeds into, now all this album bleeds into each other, and I absolutely love it. Um, Your Possible Pasts, which, again, it's a stunning song. It starts off really light, but when it goes into the chorus, you get these really, really fantastic guitarists from David Gilmore. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't show up m much on this album, but I'm going to burn. Sorry, everyone, I was interrupted again. Ha! Huh. Your Possible Past, the guitar riff that comes in on the chorus, is absolutely fantastic. It's so heavy and vibrant. I love it. Uh, one of the few, when you're one of the few, to land on your feet. Uh, essentially, the song is about, so the war is over, and you're one of the only ones in your regiment that survived. So now what do you do? You know, uh, unfortunately, when... The British soldiers came back from places like the Korean War. And I don't think we served in Vietnam. I might be wrong on that one. But when our soldiers came back from wars, they weren't very well treated. Even uh, the most recent Afghan war. I, not 100%, do not come at me, but I do believe they weren't treated well after that either. But uh, So yeah, it's just like, well now what do we do? Um, when the Tigers Broke Free. Absolutely stunning song. And that's... That was in the, the war movie. Uh, the song's about how you've got these Sherman tank divisions and they're calling their commander saying, there's tigers up ahead, we need to retreat, we can't win. This is a death trap. But the commander's saying, no, no, you hold your ground, you stay there. And essentially all of them died. Um, all of them died because of the tiger tank. And he, uh, Roger Waters is saying, well, why did my da dad die for that? Are you the commander who killed my dad? Um, it's really touching. And I can't imagine... I'm, I'm privileged and very lucky that, at least in my lifetime, since 1997, uh, I haven't seen my parents go off to war or anything like that. But being born in... I don't know. Say you were born in the 30s and you were 10 years old in 1940. And then you had to watch your dad go off to fight the Germans. That must have been scary, you know? Uh, uh, the Hero's Return. Absolutely brilliant song, as I said in the, the look section. Brilliant. Uh, the Gunner's Dream. 
which ties into the same themes as the post-war dream, where essentially it's a gunner in World War II who is dreaming about no more wars, no more violence, that people will stop killing the children and everyone can live in peace. And I love the end of the song where Roger Waters sounds really explosive and he's saying like, uh, you know, this dream is driving me insane. Nobody's listening to me. I don't want to be at war anymore. Uh, it's a stunning song. And side one ends with paranoid eyes, which brings the tempo down again. And it's a really beautiful song about someone who deals with PTSD. And they've come back from the war. And now they, they don't know who they can trust. And um, they don't know what to do anymore. Because they're so shell-shocked and messed up from war. Uh, and it also talks about how they were promised, if they went to war, they were promised riches and fame and they could retire and all this life of luxury that when they actually came back from the war they didn't get, they were lied to. Uh, it's a really stunning song. So side two starts with Get your filthy hands off me desert which is it's really, it's comical how it sounds I'll admit it's a bit funny but it does set the stage. Um, it's essentially it's more just anti-war stuff so it's supposed to be the populace of the Middle East or somewhere, wherever there's a desert, saying, you know, go, go away, get, get, I don't want you here. And then the, there's another voice saying, well, what did he say? And then a huge explosion, which is very poignant even today, but I'm not getting into that. Um, and then the Fletcher Memorial Home, absolutely beautiful song, which is another... So a lot of this album is criticism on the Falklands War. Now, the Falklands War you can have your own opinion on. Um, it was a war, at least it was, a, they invaded us and then we, we took it back. And in 2013, there was a referendum on whether those islands wanted to be part of Argentina or part of the UK. And it was something like 99.8% of the population voted to stay part of the UK. So, you know, but that's, I know it's a really, really harsh subject. I'm not getting into it, but that is what the song is about. Not not the, the referendum bit. That was way later. Not the point. Um, but it's a really beautiful song. And obviously Fletcher is um, his dad's name or his dad's middle name. Hang on. Uh, it says it right there. Yeah, Eric Fletcher Waters. Really beautiful song. Uh, Southampton Dock. Uh, I've been to Southampton. I didn't like it, but... I, the, the song is beautiful, and it's from, uh, so that's where they are setting off, and it's from the, the perspective, I can say it, of the woman, or his girlfriend, his wife, whatever, waving him goodbye, and she's got a handkerchief, she's crying, because it's beautiful, uh, or it's sad, sorry, not beautiful, uh, the final cut, the title track, and one of my favourite songs, one of my favourite Pink Floyd songs, and one of my favourite songs overall. I absolutely love it. I love the guitar in it. I love how light it sounds. I put the lyrics for me. Some of Roger Waters' best writing ever. Uh, I'll read you some of it. I won't read all of it, but uh, could anybody love him or is it just a crazy dream? And if I show you my dark side, will you still hold me tonight? And if I open my heart to you and show you my weak side, what would you do? Would you sell your story to Rolling Stone? Would you take the children away and leave me alone? So the way I interpret the song, obviously, it probably has its own meaning. I might be right. I don't know. But uh, it sounds like it's from this person's come back from war. They're suffering with PTSD and they've now got a girlfriend or they had a partner before going to war. And they're struggling to love or to trust someone because they've been through so much. And the line about would you sell your story to Rolling Stone and take the children away? Sounds like it's like, would you divorce me and then tell the newspapers everything I did to you, even though, even if I didn't mean it. It's a really, really beautiful song. And the lyrics about, I, I thought I ought to bear my naked feelings. I thought I ought to kept tear the curtain down. I held the blade in trembling hands, prepared to make it. But then just then the phone rang. I never had the nerve to make the final cut. Absolutely beautiful. So... He's built a curtain up around himself and, you know, he's trying to keep his feelings out. But and then he's, get, he's going to confront them 
and tear it all down, but he just couldn't. Also, uh, the Iron Curtain, this could be in reference to the Iron Curtain, which was the Soviet Union's blockade of Eastern Europe and East Germany. Uh, that's a whole other video again in itself. But then the final cut, it bleeds into Not Now John, whereas it gets really light and soft, and then Not Now John just sort of explodes. And something I didn't mention earlier, which I forgot, uh, David Gilmore sings lead vocals on Not Now John. It's the only song on the album with not Roger Waters singing. But his vocals are electrifying. They are really good. And Nick Mason's drumming sounds so punchy and energetic. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, and we already spoke about the song, but basically it's the government saying... We're going off to fight the Falklands War. Well, I know you've got problems here at home, but I don't care. You know, I've got all this other, you know, I'm going to the Falklands. And there's a lot of songs in the same vein, even today. Uh, there's a really good Black IP song called Where Is The Love? That is sort of about the same thing, just a different war. And it's unfortunate that, that the theme of the song still rings true today, where uh, I'm not getting into that. But yeah. That's a really beautiful song, really heavy and punchy. And the guitar solo, uh, David Gilmour's guitar solo is explosive. It's brilliant. And it's so, it really stands out because it's so different than the rest of the album. It's really something special. And then the closing track, Two Sons in the Sunset. Now that song, if that song had been anywhere else on the album, it wouldn't have been as good. Or if it had been on a different album. But because it's where it is, it is the perfect closing track. I adore it. As a closing track, it is one of the best closing tracks because the way that the the way the song ends with those saxophones that play the whole album out is beautiful. And it's so I so I did a whole video on closing tracks and it really it fills you up. It it uh completes you or makes you feel I can't think what the word is. It's gone from my mind. But it's a good closing track because you feel like it's really rounding the album off. It's a good ending. And uh, the song is absolutely beautiful. Fantastic. Uh, in conclusion. Sorry. As with a lot of Pink Floyd albums, there's about a million more different things I could talk about. Uh, also, there is a, there's a short film for this album, which I admit, despite me thinking this album's a 10 out of 10, and it's one of my favourite albums of all time, I haven't seen the film. But yeah, this is a 10 out of 10. It is brilliant and I absolutely adore it. And I know that's controversial because it's mainly considered one of the worst Pink Floyd albums. But I think it's absolutely brilliant and some of Roger Waters' best work. So I'd like to know what you think about this album down below. And if you let me know what you'd like to see me review next. Obviously, I'm going to do the rest of the Pink Floyd albums. But if there's an album... Uh, I have in my collection you'd love, like to see a video on just let me know uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon take care everyone